For many railroad enthusiasts, railroad signals are a mystery. They display different colors at different times. Keen observers may notice that trains exhibit certain behaviors upon approaching signals, slowing down, stopping, or speeding up. I am the Central Texas Rail Fan, and today I'm going to teach you how to read railroad signals. While this series is primarily intended to cover signaling on mainline railroads in western North America, most common rules apply to the entire continent. Each railroad signal indicates track conditions and speed restrictions ahead. Signals warn trains of not only other trains, but of upcoming switches, junctions, and speed restrictions. Our first signal is the most important one. Every railroad uses this indication and every railroader knows what it means. Stop. Any signal showing only red lights is a stop signal. Contrary to its name, there are certain cases where a train may pass a stop signal. A train can stop, then proceed at a slow speed, at a stop signal when given explicit permission from a dispatcher to do so, or if the signal is not controlled by a dispatcher. More on that in the next episode. Next, we have the approach aspect. The yellow light indicates to the train crew that they must be prepared to stop at the next signal. Most railroads require trains to slow to 30 miles per hour upon sight of this signal. But hey, you may ask, why is there a red signal below that? The bottom signal is used for other movements which we will get into soon. When only the bottom signal is red, it can be ignored. Next up is the approach medium, or advanced approach, depending on the railroad. This indication gives extra warning of an approaching red signal. It means that the next signal is showing an approach aspect. Most railroads require trains to reduce their speed to 40 miles per hour upon sight of this signal. Our next signal is the clear indication. This indicates a clear track ahead and allows a train to proceed at up to the maximum speed allowed on the line. Signals get slightly more complicated when switches are involved. Switches usually contain tight curves and require a train to slow down to some degree. When a train is taking a switch, it is taking a diverging route. The next set of signals will indicate those movements. Diverging approach is very similar to the main approach aspect. A train must pass the signal at 30 miles per hour or less if the switch does not allow those speeds. The train must also be prepared to stop at the next signal. Diverging advanced approach or diverging approach medium is very similar. A train must pass it at no more than 40 miles per hour or slower if the switch cannot handle those speeds. The train must also be prepared to stop two signals away. Diverging clear allows the train to proceed through the switch at the maximum allowed speed. The only speed restriction is the speed limit of the switch itself. With stringent speed restrictions on switches, trains need warning of the slow speeds. Enter Approach Diverging. This signal indicates a switch or other turnout at the next signal. The train should proceed accordingly so that they can safely enter the switch at the prescribed speed. Rail yards are another location that requires a specific type of signal. Trains often need to move very slowly in order to spot hazards and navigate tight tracks. This is where the restricting aspect comes into play. A restricting signal either uses a lunar white or flashing red light, depending on the railroad. They all mean the same thing though. Do not proceed past the signal exceeding 15 to 20 miles per hour or one half the range of vision from the locomotive. This is called restricted speed. A restricting signal can either be on the top or bottom signal head, but it means the same thing wherever it is. Our last signal of the day is approach restricting. This gives a train crew warning of a potential restricting signal ahead and warns them to prepare to slow or stop. Well, that should cover all the basic railroad signal aspects. Of course, every railroad has slightly different rules, but this guide should give you the basic knowledge necessary for rail fanning. In future episodes, we will talk about the signals themselves, signal detection, 
types of signal systems, and more. Thank you for watching, please like and subscribe for more railfanning content. Thank you.